name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My name is Hiram Monk Herman, and I'm a monk at St. Tikhon's Monastery here in South Canaan, Pennsylvania. I'm also a lecturer at St. Tikhon's Seminary. This video is the first in a series of 12 videos introducing Orthodox liturgics. That is, the nuts and bolts of how the texts of our divine services are arranged and put together each day. In this first video, I'm going to introduce the liturgical books that we use in the church's daily services, and I'm also going to discuss various editions of those same books available in English translations. The names of liturgical books aren't always easy to remember or keep straight. They're all Greek words, but we are going to learn what each word means and how that relates to each book's content. The books used in the church's daily services are the following. First, the Hieraticon, and then the Horologion. Then we have the Menaean, the Lenten Triodion, the Pentecostarian, and the Octoikos, or Paraklitiki, and finally, the Typikon. The first two books, the Hieraticon and the Horologion, are grouped together because they are used throughout the church's year, every day, and they contain the liturgical texts that remain the same each day, that for the most part do not vary throughout the year. So first, the Hieraticon. This is the book containing the texts used by the priest and the deacon as they serve. The name Hieraticon derives from the Greek word irevs. Irevs is Greek for priest. The word hierarchy comes from this same root word. All the deacons' litanies and all the priests' prayers and exclamations and dismissals are contained in the Hieraticon. Another name for the Hieraticon is the Liturgicon. And in Slavonic, this book is referred to as the Slujebnik. In English, it's just sometimes known as the priest's service book. Second, the Horologion. This book also contains the unvarying parts of a service, but it's used not by the clergy, but by the readers and the choir. The word comes from the Greek word for hour, referring to the liturgical hours it contains. In the Horologion are found the Psalms and any other texts on changing hymns or prayers used at the kleros, or reader's stand. In Slavonic, this book is known as the Chasoslov, and in English, we could simply call it the Book of Hours. Now, the next four books, the Minean, the Pentecostarian, the Octoikos, and the Triodian, these books contain the vast body of variable hymnography found in our services. That is, these books contain all the hymns, the Stichira, Apostica, Traparia, Kondakia, the canons. We'll discuss all those terms later on in the course. But these books contain all the hymns that change each day, depending on the commemoration appointed for each day of the year. Now, before we discuss these books in detail, I'd like us to pause and take a good close look at the church calendar. There are actually two layers to the liturgical calendar. And these two layers interact with each other in different ways each year. To illustrate this, let me ask you a difficult question. What day of the week does Christmas fall on? You can't answer this question. It's a trick question. There's no answer because the day of the week for Christmas changes every year. Okay, now here's another difficult question. What date does Pascha fall on each year? Again, there's no answer. The date of Pascha is different every year. But unlike Christmas, Pascha is always on the same day of the week every year, Sunday. And Christmas, unlike Pascha, is always on the same date, 
December 25th. So you can see how there are two layers to the calendar. One layer is what I call fixed. The dates stay the same each year. And the other is the movable. The dates change each year. We usually refer to this movable layer as the Paschal calendar, or the Paschalion, because all the commemorations in this layer of the calendar depend on the date of Pascha. On almost any given day of the church year, some elements of the church services for that day are governed by the fixed date calendar, and other elements are governed by the Paschal calendar. In the fixed date calendar, each date of the year has its own commemoration. Most of them are devoted to the memory of a particular saint or group of saints, but some of them are feasts of the Lord or the Mother of God. We already mentioned December 25th, Christmas, the Nativity of Christ. There's also January 6th, the Theophany or the Baptism of Christ, or March 25th, the Annunciation, etc. The hymnography for all the fixed date commemorations is contained in the Menaean. The word Menaean derives from the Greek word minas, that is, month. So there is one volume of the Menaean for each month, 12 volumes total. Volume 1 begins on September 1st, uh, which is the ecclesiastical new year, and volume 12 ends on August 31st. Each calendar date of the year has its own service in the Menaean, so there are at least 366 complete services, because there's one for February 29th in leap years. Complete services, that, in other words, complete sets of hymns for a specific commemoration in the Menaean. In fact, however, there are quite more than 366 because many dates will have an alternative service for a more recent or perhaps a local saint. In addition to the commemorations from the Menaean, based on the fixed calendar date, there are all other commemorations or themes based on the Paschal calendar, that is, based on how many days or weeks a particular day falls before or after Pascha. For example, the Feast of Palm Sunday, Thomas Sunday, Ascension, Pentecost, and All Saints, they do not have a fixed date from year to year, but they occur a certain number of days before or after Pascha. And they will vary each year according to the date of Pascha. In fact, all the days of Lent and all the days between Pascha and Pentecost have their own set of hymns. And even after Pentecost and after All Saints, the Sunday after Pentecost, throughout the rest of the year, there are still hymns sung according to the day of the week and according to how many weeks you happen to be after Pascha. The commemorations and hymns that are determined by the varying date of Pascha are contained in three different books, the Triodion, the Pentecostarian, and the Octoikos. First, the Triodion. This is the book for Lent, or the Great Fast. Although, in fact, we first begin to use the Triodion four Sundays before Lent begins. The word Triodion is a Greek word that simply means three odes. Triodion, three odes. And it refers to a feature of Lenten matins where the canons composed for Lent, don't have the usual eight odes, but only three. Now, you don't need to know what all that means. We'll talk about it in another lesson. But the word triodion comes from this detail of the Lenten order of services. And the triodion takes us all the way from the season before Lent up through Holy Week until we arrive at Pascha, and there we start to use the Pentecostarian. The Triodion contains a complete set of hymns for each day of the week, starting one week before Lent begins, in Cheese Fair week. And it also has hymns for the three Sundays prior to that week. 
Next, the Pentecostarian. This is a book that we use starting on the day of Pascha. And we use it all the way through the Feast of Ascension and Pentecost and the Sunday of All Saints. This is, in total, a period eight weeks long. The Pentecostarian contains complete sets of hymns for each day during this period. And, by the way, we can use the word service to refer to a complete set of hymns covering vespers, matins, and a liturgy for any given day. So, for example, I could refer to the service for January 8th from the Menaean, or the service for the third Wednesday after Pascha from the Pentecostarian. This is a different use of the word service than how it's used when we talk about, for example, the service of Vespers or the service of Matins. Anyway, the name Pentecostarian comes from the word Pentecost, which refers not just to the 50th day after Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of the Descent of the Holy Spirit, but the word Pentecost in its older use referred to the entire period of 50 days between Pascha and Pentecost. So the book used during Pentecost, or we could say during Paschal Tide, is the Pentecostarian. In Slavonic, it has a rather different name. It's called the Triod Svetnaya, or the Flowery Triodium. The Octolikos is our third book in this category. The Octolikos is otherwise known as the Book of the Eight Tones. Octo, eight, ichos, tones, modes. Because this collection of hymns is arranged in eight sections, each of which is a week long, corresponding to the eight tones of the Orthodox hymnography. We begin to use the Octoikos the day after we stop using the Pentecostarian. The last day we use the Pentecostarian is the Sunday of All Saints, a week after Pentecost. And so the next day, Monday, which also happens to be the first day of the Apostles' Fast, we begin to use the Octoikos. We start in the Octoikos not with tone one, as you might expect, but with tone eight, because that's where the Pentecostarian left off. So, in that first week after All Saints Sunday, we go through all the Octoikos hymns in tone eight. And then, on Saturday evening, at the end of that week, we put away the tone eight Octoikos volume, and we take out tone one. Every week, we switch to a new tone at Saturday evening Vespers. And we continue in this eight-week cycle for the rest of the year, up until the following Lent. When we're discussing the octolikos and, and hymns that are in different tones, it's important to understand that the different tones refer not only to different music or melodies or chants, but they refer to different texts as well. For example, the stakira sung at Vespers on a Tuesday evening in the week of tone one differ not only in music, but in their actual words from the Stikira song at Tuesday evening Vespers in tone two or tone three. So the Octolikos contains 56 full services, that is 56 full sets of hymnography for Vespers, Matins, and Liturgy. 56, in other words, seven days worth of services for eight weeks, seven times eight. The Slavonic name, is the same, except that we take off the OS, the OS at the end, so octoich instead of octoichos. And there's also another Greek word that's sometimes used for the octoichos, the paraklitiki. In our next lecture, we're going to discuss how the Menaean calendar cycle of fixed feasts interacts with the Paschal cycle of movable feasts throughout the church year. Most of the time, there are elements of both layers of the calendar present on any given day of the year. But sometimes, we'll see that the Menaean will take over and completely displace the material from the Octoikos. And at other times, the Paschal cycle, specifically the Triodian and the Pentecostarian, 
will take over and, uh, and bump out the material from the Menaean. The Typicon, which is the last book that I mentioned in our list of books, the Typicon is the book that governs the interaction of these two layers of the calendar. It tells you what to do when Annunciation, which is on the fixed date calendar, falls on the Sunday of the Cross in Lent, or the Thursday of the Great Canon, or even on Pascha or Bright Tuesday, all of which are on the movable calendar. The Typicon tells you what to do when Ascension, which is on the movable calendar, falls on May 21st, the feast of Saints Constantine and Helen, or when Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday. More on all of this next time. But now, let's discuss some actual editions of these books that exist in English. First, the Hieraticon, or its other name, the Liturgicon. The most complete English Hieraticon is the Antiochian Liturgicon, edited by Bishop Basil of Wichita. Other editions include the Liturgy and All-Night Vigil clergy books published by Holy Trinity Monastery in Jordanville, and the new Hieraticon published by St. Tikhon's Monastery Press, which I am the co-editor of with Dr. Vitaly Permyakov. This last offers the most detailed presentation of the Russian practice, but it does not include the divine liturgies. However, there will soon be a companion volume, also published by St. Tikhon's, that will include the three divine liturgies. Next, the Horologion. There are three complete editions of the Horologion in English. First, the Horologion published by Holy Transfiguration Monastery, which follows Greek practice. Then we have the, Hor the Horologion published by Holy Trinity Monastery in Jordanville. And finally, the Horologion published by St. Tikhon's. These last two both follow Russian practice. The St. Tikhon's Horologion is out of print. But if you can get a copy, it is rather, rather useful to have because it's extremely informative and the services are laid out in a manner that is easy to follow and learn. All right, now we turn to the Menaean. There are two complete translations of the Menaean in English. Both of them come in 12 volumes. First, the Menaean published by Holy Transfiguration Monastery, which, like their Pentecostarian, is intended for use with the Byzantine melodies. Next, there's a Menaean published by St. John of Kronstadt Press and translated by the late monk Joseph Lambertson. And this is a translation from the Slavonic Menaean, and it includes services to many Russian saints. In addition, the nine great feasts contained in the Menaean, and remember that there are 12 great feasts, but there are only nine in the Menaean because the other three great feasts are part of the Paschal cycle, and so they are found in the Triodian and the Pentecostarian. These nine great feasts in the Menaean are collected together in a volume called the Festal Menaean, translated, like the Triodian, by Metropolitan Callistos and Mother Mary, and that's available from St. Tikhon's Press. This Festal Menaean is a very worthwhile volume to have, even if you already have a complete Menaean because it contains much valuable introductory material and many good appendices. And in my opinion, it also is a very beautiful translation. Now, we look at the Lenten Triodian. The go-to translation for the Triodian is that of Metropolitan Callistus and Mother Mary, just like the Festal Menaean. It was published originally by Faber and Faber in England, but now it's kept in print by St. Tikhon's. It is in two volumes. The main volume contains all the Sundays and feasts and other major commemorations, as well as the entirety of the first week of Lent and Holy Week. The volume that's called Supplement contains all the weekdays of the other weeks. A full liturgical library should definitely have both volumes. There are two complete English translations of the Pentecostarian. First, that of Holy Transfiguration Monastery, which is translated from the Greek, 
and in such a way that the hymns can be sung to the Byzantine metered melodies, just like their Menaean. The other is by, printed by St. John of Kronstadt Press, and it follows Russian practice. There are some other abridged Pentecostaria containing the texts for Sundays and feasts, but not including every weekday, most notably Mother Mary's translation from the Monastery of the Vale in boussy en haute in France. However, this volume is not easy to get a copy of. There are two complete English translations of the Octoikos. That of St. John of Kronstadt Press, translated once again by the late monk Joseph Lambertson, and it is in four volumes, two tones per volume. And the other is translated by Mother Mary, again from the Monastery of the Vale in France. And it's available from Eighth Day Books in Wichita, Kansas. This second edition from Mother Mary, this is in nine volumes. One volume for all the Sunday services in all eight tones, and then eight volumes for each of the weekday services in each tone. The Typicon. There is actually no English translation of the Typicon. However, there are some books that distill much of the content of the Typicon into a format that I'd say is more easily understood by the non-expert. Because even if the Typicon were to be translated, these secondary books would still be necessary for most people, as the Typicon itself is a rather difficult book to understand. For Antiochian and Greek practice, I recommend the Typicon notes prepared by Bishop Basil of Wichita and available online at this link. For Russian practice, the best reference is a book called The Order of Divine Services by Peter Fikula and Father Matthew Williams. It's available in two volumes from St. John of Kronstadt Press. Also worth consulting is The Typicon Decoded, a book by Archbishop Job Getcha, published by St. Vladimir Seminary Press. It contains not only information about the rubrics of the services, but also a good summary of the history of our liturgical services. Finally, I'd like to note that many local Orthodox jurisdictions, especially here in America, have their own often provisional texts that draw from the full books of the Menaean, the Octoikos, etc. Sometimes these are made available online. Sometimes they are spiral-bound or coil-bound volumes. These are practical books intended for use in parishes that don't have services every day, and thus that might not have need of complete texts. However, for a choir director or anyone involved in leading the services, it really is best to be as familiar as possible with the complete edition of each liturgical book so that you understand what sources are being drawn from in the preparation of these more provisional publications. So that's our basic introduction to most of the Orthodox liturgical books. In the next video, we're going to take a deeper look at the church year and the two layers of the calendar, and we'll see how all these books work together throughout the year. <laughs>